fractions, a la shmup. Have you ever run into the prickly situation of having four people and only one pizza? Or try baking a cake that didn't turn out so well because you put exactly one cup of everything into it? Well, it certainly would be wonderful if everything came out to a nice even number, but our world doesn't work that way. To communicate and make sense of all those bits and pieces in between, we rely on fractions. Let's start by breaking down one of these suckers. Up top, you've got your numerator, and downstairs is the denominator. The denominator tells us how many total pieces make up the whole, while the numerator says how many of those pieces we're talking about. So if your mother tells you that you can have one half of a pizza, she is saying that you can have one of the two pieces left over. A fraction may also appear in the form of a mixed number, which is a combination of a whole number and a fraction. For example, if you're baking schmupperdoodle cookies, TM, you'll see clearly that it asks for two and three-fourths cups of chocolate chips. It's the same as 11 fourths, but there's probably not a level for that on your measuring cup. We get a fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator. We call them improper fractions. Fractions help us better communicate what we want because they give us a larger math vocabulary. Without them, it would be impossible to fairly divide food. And Fellini's classic film, Eight and a Half, would simply be called Eight. In short, life would be more difficult, and we would only be having a fraction of the fun. <laughs> what did the buffalo say to his son as he left for school? Bye, son. Okay, bad joke, but if you survived it, how about clicking the subscribe button below? And if you're looking for more jokes from yours truly, why not check out our website at www.schmoop.com. And if you want to get updates on what's new, well, check us out on Facebook and Twitter, too. Please check our Facebook and Twitter pages, please.